Continuing now with question number 10. Question number 10 and 11 do not require you to show your work. So all you need to do is draw some triangles and then figure out your answer based off those triangles. So let me do that for you. Now first recall, recall that the tangent inverse only occurs within this moon from negative pi halves to positive pi halves. Now, since tangent inverse values here is 2 3rd, we're taking the tangent inverse of a positive number, that means my triangle would be in the first quadrant. If it had been a negative number, I would need to draw my triangle in the fourth quadrant. Next, I'm going to label the sides. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we have 2 over 3. Remember, if you're down in the fourth quadrant, that the drop should be a negative. And next, to get the hypotenuse, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, so 2 squared plus 3 squared is equal to 13, so then this uh, hypotenuse is the square root of 13. What is the sine value here? Opposite over hypotenuse is 2 over root 13, and then you would want to rationalize your denominator. So your answer then is 2 root 13 over 13. Now for question number 11, we don't actually do the triangle method for this one. Uh, instead, we find the cosine of 3 pi over 4 for starters. So let me go ahead and just simplify it this way. We're going to rewrite it. Replacing the cosine of 3 pi fourths with, with the value from the unit circle, which is negative root 2 over 2. Now remember that sine inverse, like tangent inverse, exists in this moon right here. Cosine has the rising sun, uh, sine has the moon. Now the moon goes from negative pi halves up to positive pi halves. So when we're looking for the sine value of negative root 2 over 2, that value is going to exist down in the fourth quadrant. Normally in the fourth quadrant on the unit circle, we would call this value 7 pi fourths, but because we are going down between 0 and negative pi halves, we're actually looking at negative pi fourths, which is coterminal with 7 pi fourths, but our answer needs to be an exact value that actually corresponds with sine inverse. So you see here that the correct answer is negative pi force, not 7 pi force. Okay, question number 12 is one that requires work, so I will do this one on the board and the next two, 12, 13, and 14 all require work. Okay, so here's question 12. What we're going to do is we want to get everything on one side and then factor out the GCF. GCF is then going to be 6 sine t. And then next we use the zero factor property. The zero factor property says that either the first factor or the second factor is equal to zero. We can simplify each of these further. Okay, so once you get algebraically as far as you can go, next you need to use the unit circle. Where are the values on the unit circle where sine is equal to zero? At zero and at pi. Where are the values where cosine is equal to negative one-fourth? Well, negative one-fourth on the x-axis is right about here, but negative one-fourth is not a value on the unit circle, so what I need to do is use my calculator 
to figure out the values. Now, when I use the calculator, I'm going to have to take arc cosine of negative one fourth. And arc cosine will only give me values in the first two quadrants because remember that arc cosine has the rising sun. So what that means is that I will only be able to get this dot. But still, I want to start off with getting something and I need to make sure my calculator is in radian mode, right? Look at here, we are in radians. Make sure that your mode is correct. I don't want any of you to miss points on the test because your calculator is in the wrong mode. So put a sticky note on your notes if you have to. Check mode on a calculator. So cosine inverse of negative one fourth is 1.8230. Uh, so this value right here corresponds to this angle that goes from the positive x-axis over to this line. To get that same value down here, I'm going to take 2 pi and then from 2 pi, I will subtract that same angle, right? So I can move backwards from 2 pi back to this dot. It's going to have a, a congruent angle going back the other way. So I'm going to take 2 pi, subtract this value right here, and I end up with 4.4597. Okay, so those are my uh, four answers. Now let's go back to my open math. So it says give solutions accurate to at least three decimal places. You see the 1.823. Uh, I actually had rounded. 1.82347 up to 1.8235. So had I not rounded it up, this is three decimal places. This is correct. And then I have a 4.460. That would be three decimal places. And then anything that is exact from the unit circle needs to stay exact uh, 0 and pi. So don't write this one as uh, 3.14, etc. Uh, write this one as pi. Okay, question number 13 is next. We are finding all solutions. And I'm going to just find out for you right now. This is in radians. So that you know for the test. This is in radians. Question number 13 is in radians. Make a note for yourself. Okay, so I'm looking for all solutions, but the first thing I notice is that I have two different trig functions, and that's not what I want. So what I'm going to use is one of the Pythagorean identities, a variant of it, to get sine squared x replaced by 1 minus cosine squared x. And then I copy the rest of the equation as is. And now I have a quadratic, so I need to collect all my terms together. I never factor with a negative leading coefficient. I only will factor with a positive leading coefficient. So either you need to factor out this negative or you need to just divide both sides by negative one. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to divide both sides here by negative one. And then this is going to be algebraically equivalent to uh, u squared plus 2u plus 1 is equal to 0, right? These are algebraically equ equivalent. So you can use a u substitution or you can just make a note to yourself that the structure of this equation matches the structure of this equation, which would factor into u plus 1 quantity squared which means that over here I'm going to be able to factor into cosine x 
plus 1 quantity squared. So then with the zero factor property, I'm not going to list both occurrences of this factor, cosine x plus 1, and I'm not going to set them each equal to zero. You only have to set it once equal to zero. Just like over here, you would conclude that u is equal to negative 1. With a multiplicity of 2, yes, but you don't need to list that. Over here, we're going to likewise have that the cosine of x is equal to negative 1. So where do we have a cosine of x equal to negative 1 on the unit circle? Right over here at pi. So this one only had one answer. It's very possible that your version of question 13 could have multiple locations on the unit circle. We reviewed that in question 12, what it would look like to have more than one answer. In this particular problem, I was really focusing on reviewing how to change a, an equation that has more than one trig function into an equation that has only one trig function. And then that one is in quadratic form. How do we deal with a trig equation in quadratic form? And once you get down here, it's a review of previous concepts. So you can go back to question 12 to review how to uh, get numbers here. Okay, so now let's go back to the computer. So we have pi plus 2 pi k. Now they wrote or negative pi. You could use negative pi. I don't know why you would. And what can k be? Can k be any real number? No. k is always going to be an integer. Okay? Not a whole number, an integer. Because we want to be able to go forward and backwards. Okay. So now let's go to question number 14, which also requires for us to show our work. And I will put that one up on the board. So for question 14, while we do have the same trig function sine for both terms, what we don't have is a sine t for both of them, and that's not good. So what I want to do is I need to replace sine of 2t using one of the formulas in the back of the book. So I'm going to use the double angle formula for sine. Sine of 2a is 2 sine a cos a. So that means that sine of 2t is 2 sine a, sorry, t cos t. Okay, so the point here is that I'm going to be using a double angle identity to change this equation into only having a t. Yes, now I have a different trig function, a cosine, but I only have two terms, and I can factor out the GCF, and that would give me two separate factors that each have their own trig function. So the, the GCF is going to be, let's see, I have a 6 and a 4, right? So 2 sine t. So for my first factor, I'll, I'll end up with a, a 3 cosine t because this product is 6 sine t cosine t. And then factoring out a 2 sine t here, I just have a, a 2 left. So now zero factor property says that I'm going to have 2 sine t equals 0 or 3 cosine t minus 2 equals 0. You can actually skip this part right here. This is, uh, you could go straight. Now I would make my intermediate algebra students show that step, the zero factor property step, but we're beyond that, so we're going to be okay with just going straight down to saying that sine of t is equal to zero, and likewise you could skip that same sort of step in a previous problem, the zero factor property step, and go straight to the result here, or the cosine of t is equal to two-thirds. So on the unit circle, Sine is equal to 0 at 0, and pi cosine of 2 thirds occurs in the first and the fourth quadrant at some sort of decimal approximation. 
Uh, let me return back real quick to see how I'm supposed to be entering this. Uh, at least two decimal places. Okay, so last time I didn't read the directions, and this time I am. So I need to take cosine inverse of two-thirds. I'm in radians. All of these equations are solved in radians. And that is to two decimal places, 0.84. And since this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here, this other dot is going to be 2 pi minus 0.84. which is going to be 5.44. So my answers are 0, 0.84, pi, and 5.44. Where are we? Here. Okay, so they say at least two decimal places, so they did end up listing a whole bunch more than necessary. You can stop at 2, but do notice that pi is still listed as pi because it's an exact value from the unit circle. Now for questions 15 and 16, you do not have to show any work, but I'm going to anyway because you probably want to know what I'm doing. All right, let's start with question number 15. First, we want to isolate the trig function. So what that means is we need to divide both sides by 3, and when we do that, let me use a color here that's a little easier on the eyes. How about dark green? Cosine. Cosine of 3x is equal to 2 thirds. Now it just so happens that I already found the cosine values that are equal to 2 thirds in the previous problem. Do you remember them? Right here. Now this is coincidental, but it's going to be helpful for me that, so I don't have to do it all again. Okay, so what that means is that my two values here, I only need to find the smallest three positive solutions, but I, I need to go ahead and start as though I needed to find all solutions. So I'm going to set 3x equal to both of these and at least the two decimal places. So I'm going to have 0.84. But I, I could have a rounding error, so let me go out a little further. I'll round there. Plus 2 pi k. So this would be my general solution, my first general solution. And then my second general solution would be that 3x uh, is equal to 5.44, etc., plus 2 pi k. So next I need to divide both sides by 3. And dividing both sides by 3, of course 3x becomes x, 0 0.84107 becomes roughly 0 0.2804, and 2 pi k becomes 2 pi thirds k. We're going to do the same process over here, divide both sides by 3, and now we're going to get our smallest three positive solutions. So the first one is uh, 0.28, two decimal places. Whoops, that's supposed to be an 8. 8. Okay, and then the next one is 1.81. 1 and then the next one is going to be taking this 0.28 and adding 2 pi thirds. So taking 0.28 and add 2 pi thirds, we end up with 2.37. If we had needed four or five or six different answers, I could keep generating them using these. So 0.28, now I have to erase this to be able to see the answer. And you see what I have here is the same thing, except they went out a lot further, but you only need to go to at least two decimal places. Okay, and for the last one, since I see that this is sine cos minus cos sine, and that looks remarkably like the sine A minus B formula, it is in fact the sine A minus B formula. So I'm observing that the sine cos minus cos sine is the same thing as A minus B. Now in this case, A 
is 3x. And you can see this in the back of your book in the Sum and Difference Identities section. Sine, cos, minus cos, sine in the Sum and Difference Identities. You'll see it as sine A cos B minus cos A sine B, and it's listed as sine A minus B. So what that means is that we have the sine of negative 3x Now it just so happens because sine is an odd function, the negative is going to pop out in front. If you have cosine here, the negative will die because cosine is an even function. Now notice I do have a string of equal signs, but everything happens to be equal. And these are all equal to negative 0.15, and now I'm going to move to a new line of work where I do not have equal things. So I have the sine of 3x is equal to 0.15, which is going to be some dot right here. There's actually another dot over here too, right? But we only have to find the smallest positive solution, so I don't care about this one right here. I only care about this one right here. And I can use my calculator. The sine inverse function will tell me, and this is going to be in radians, sine inverse of 0.15. Huh, is actually really similar. In this particular case, I actually end up with a number that's very similar. I'm going to go ahead and write out some additional decimal places here. Okay, so it, it does keep going. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Here's my answer, 0 0.05. I only have to go to two decimal places. That would be helpful if I took off the annotation. And there you go. So you can see that it's not just a plain old 0 0.05, but you only need to list out two decimal places, so 0 0.05 would be fine. Okay, so that's, this, that's the whole test except for the proof. So I'm going to post another video that's focused solely on how to do the proof problem.